welcome to Gifted Guitars. My name is Chris. Today we are continuing our work on this Bob Ross inspired Stratocaster. Last week I followed a Bob Ross tutorial to paint the body of the guitar. And if you missed that, I'll put a link up above and in the description down below. But today we're gonna to be working on a part of the guitar that has slowly become my favorite thing to do on the guitars, and that is the headstock of the guitar. I love doing this because I get to be really creative, I get to do some woodworking, and really make the guitar unique. The body of the guitar is pretty much the same shape as when I got it, but the headstock is going to be completely different. Since the beginning of this build, I've had an idea of what I want to do for the headstock of this guitar, but a couple of you put some really good suggestions in the comments of the last video. So the way I usually make a decision on this is I'll trace the blank shape of this headstock out on a piece of paper a whole bunch of times, and then doodle in whatever I want. Try a whole bunch of different designs, and choose one design to refine until I carve it out, in the headstock of the guitar. So the original Fender Stratocaster is an iconic guitar and it has a headstock that looks like this. And when you deviate too far from this or get too close to it, it ends up looking kind of funky. So I need to find something that looks close enough to this to look like a regular guitar, but far enough away from this so that it doesn't look like I'm trying to copy it and doing a bad job of it. Here are the different designs that I've been sort of working with and I'll explain each one. These are the first three designs that I did. Originally I thought, oh, a paintbrush, that'd be perfect. I'd put the same color paint as what's on the guitar. A uh, few people suggested that I do an, <laughs> a Bob Ross hairstyle on the guitar. So I started off with this and then kind of moved to this. A few other people recommended that I do a squirrel tail, so I did this design here. Here's another squirrel tail over here. Here's a paintbrush design. Trying different Bob Ross heads here. A more refined paintbrush right here. Then I played around with the idea of doing a more intricate carving so that I would carve out all these little like parts of the hair and a more intricate Bob Ross. I simplified his hair, but, but put a face in there. And my son Parker said, hey, why don't you take this and combine it with this. And so I think some iteration of this is what, what we're gonna end up with on the guitar. I didn't think this was gonna work, but I kinda like it. His hair is so circular that it matches the shape of a standard Stratocaster, and, uh, but it's totally different and weird and it fits in line very nicely with the guitar. All right, I got my rough cut done. This little Bob Ross head is just ridiculous, and I'm totally here for it. I think this is so funny and so perfect for this project. You can see this was a really rough cut. I didn't really get that close to my line. And the reason I did that was so that I could go in with sandpaper and work my way down to my line because sometimes I get these jagged edges with the saw, and I don't want to have to sand down past this line, so if I, I'm gonna sand it anyway, I might as well sand it down to where I want it to be. Funny design, I mean, it's definitely looks like a lumpy Stratocaster, but when you get close up to it and see that it's Bob Ross, that's just gonna make me happy. And now it's time to sand it down.
Okay, I think we've achieved something here. Now it's time to take out the chisels and put a little detail in this guy. All right, at this point, I'm getting into more of the fine detail work and sanding. And on one of my earlier builds, someone suggested that I get these little like Q-tip sander things, and I forgot about it until I got to this point, and then I was like, oh yeah, that was a really good suggestion. So I ordered some of those. They're not gonna come in time for this guitar, but they'll be here for future builds. But in doing research for that, I found these sanding sticks. I ordered one of those as well. Again, not gonna be here in time. So I'm gonna have to get creative on how I do the sanding inside of these fine detail areas. One of the things that I'm going to use is a file, and I have a, a set of uh, diamond files here. They're all different shapes. I bought these originally because I thought that they would be good for the nuts and for uh, shaping the frets. They didn't work out so well for that, but I think they might work out well for sanding the details in here. And I think I'm also gonna try and mimic the sanding stick that I ordered before it comes. So I'll be making one of those, but first I'm gonna kinda go in with my X-Acto blade here, uh, carve out a little bit more detail, go in with the chisels a little bit, just sort of clean up everything in the face area. I don't want it to be exactly like a perfect face shape. I just kind of want the the uh, impression of a face to be there. So I'm gonna get in there, get that fine detail work going. To make a sanding stick, what I've done is taken a little piece of wood and kind of carved it into this rough shape here with a point so I can hold it and sand where I need to sand. And I cut out a little strip of sandpaper that I'm gonna glue along the edge of this and then once it wears out, I'll take it off and glue a new piece on. And in order to glue this, I'm gonna use Super 77, which I'm probably going to instantly regret. It's a good, adhesive, but I always regret using Super 77 because it's so messy. It just kind of gets everywhere. But we'll give it a try and see if I can uh, goog on my hands afterward and try and get all the Super 77 off of it. So my little homemade sanding stick actually worked pretty well. The Super 77 wasn't too bad. <laughs> Usually it gets everywhere and like by the end my fingers are just sticking together and it's it's terrible, but uh, it worked pretty well. I was actually able to peel it off and move it to a different spot when a certain spot got uh, worn down and it stuck pretty well. And I could just get in there and, and, and sand those hard to reach spots, which is pretty awesome. This is... This is turning out a lot better than I thought. And again, this is just supposed to be the impression of Bob. It's not it's not like photo real or anything like that. It's just sort of like a little carving like you would see, um, I don't know, those chainsaw log carvings. That's kind of how I see this, just an artistic little embellishment on the guitar. But I think it looks pretty cool. I actually, I really like it. All right, now I'm gonna do something that I might regret. <laughs> I asked Jessica and I actually asked my son Jacob as well what I should do with this. If I should stain his hair darker and his beard darker and sort of do a fade into the rest of the guitar or if I should leave it like this, like just like a little carving. And they both said to make it darker. This is all about learning and trying new things. So I'm going to use the same kind of acrylic that I used on the guitar to try and stain it a little darker just to kind of give it a little bit more Bob Rossiness. 
And I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out, if it's gonna work or not, but I'm willing to try it. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and <laughs> possibly mess this up. But maybe not, maybe it'll be awesome. All right, I'm gonna try and match some of the color that's in the guitar already by using some alizarin crimson and some sap green and mixing those together. And I think Bob at one point even said this was his favorite color, so that's kind of cool. Now my goal for this is to be more of a stain than anything else, so I'm, I'm really trying to water it down a bit. I put a little painter's tape on here to kind of give me an edge to go off of because I don't want it to go around the back. So I want it to kind of just stop right there. Is it ridiculous? Yes. Do I love it? Also yes. This is awesome. <laughs> this this made it. I, I, I questioned Jessica, my wife, when she was like, oh, you should stain that. And I should never question my wife. That is amazing. It's a little Bob Ross at the end of the guitar. It's totally a Bob Ross guitar now. I've been signing my guitars lately, so I'm gonna sign this one right here where the logo on like a Fender guitar would be. And I figure I'm gonna use the same exact color here to sign my name into the guitar. I think that'll look really cool. The next thing I have to do is take the guitar and lock in all the painting that I've done on the body and the headstock with guitar lacquer. So I'm gonna be using two different types of guitar lacquer on this. I'm gonna use a high gloss on the guitar body itself. I think that'll look really nice. And on the entire neck of the guitar, from here all the way back to the back side of the guitar, I'm gonna be using a satin finish guitar lacquer. I've never used this before, but hopefully it'll give a nice feeling on the back of the guitar. It won't be super glossy. It'll look more natural, but it'll really protect the guitar uh, from use and from the elements. I don't want any lacquer to end up on the nut or the fretboard of the guitar. It's rosewood. I want it to have a natural feel to it. This will be all oiled later. For now, I need to mask it all up so that none of the guitar lacquer gets on that part of the guitar. All right, after spraying these down, uh, I've discovered a couple things. First off, uh, this guitar neck is absolutely beautiful. The grain really popped out, and there's even some like bird's eye in the maple here. There's just a, these like really cool wood grain designs that really darkened it up. It almost looks like a roasted maple or something like that. But yeah, this, I mean, this is a beautiful neck on the back of the guitar. I also learned that the body and the neck both need to get sanded down and sprayed a couple more times before I am finished with this part of the project. But my goal was to put these two pieces together and see how they looked by the end of today's episode. So I'm actually gonna take this off of its little rig, take this off of the little handle that I built, put them together, see how they feel, and then wrap up the guitar at a later time. But I think it would be a nice ending to today's episode to, to see what these two pieces look like when they're put together. So let's do it.
There it is. This is awesome. This feels great. Oh my goodness. Look at the little bob at the end, all the way down to the mural on the bottom of the guitar. I, I just feel like this is really fantastic. It feels great. It feels like a Stratocaster, which is, is what it is. It's based off of a Stratocaster guitar. Oh man. I, I mean, even the, the lacquer, the lacquer made the neck a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. It was, it was a really, uh, lighter color before here i'll show you i'll show you another guitar that i got from the same company so these started off with very similar necks and you can see this is the new one this is the stratocaster right here you can see this sort of dark grain that's sort of shown up here whereas this one doesn't have that but i love how the guitar is sort of like rustic like it has this rustic feel to it with uh the brown paint up here the, the sort of darker maple wood down here, and then the mural itself is this sort of rust, brown, green, very earthy tones to it. I think this looks really cool. One of my fears when building these guitars is that I'll go overboard on either the, the base of the guitar, the body, or the headstock, and when I put it together, it won't match, but I feel like this matches. This feels right. It feels like, it's good to have this little little Bob Ross up here at the headstock and it's great having the the painting that was taught through one of his his videos. I just think that it's it's very cool. I am loving this guitar and it feels good. It feels like I play a Stratocaster. That's my actual Fender Stratocaster. It is one of my favorite guitars. I play it all the time and this has that same feeling to it and uh, Somebody's gonna love this guitar. Anyway, that is the end of today's episode. I want to thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope that you're enjoying the build of this Stratocaster guitar. Next week, we're gonna work on the fretboard, we're gonna string it up, we're gonna put the electronics in it and see what the whole guitar looks like and, most importantly, sounds like when it's all put together. If you're new to the channel, welcome. There are a whole bunch of videos of me making guitars for my friends and family. Go ahead and check those out. And if you're sitting there watching going, I didn't think I was gonna be interested in this, but I actually, I really enjoyed this. Please consider subscribing. It means a lot to me. I, I really appreciate all of the subscribers who have subscribed so far. Make sure that you turn on the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. My goal is to post a new video every Friday. I don't always hit that goal, but that is my goal. A new video every Friday of me working on these guitars. Once this guitar is done, I'm going to give it away to somebody. I'm not sure who yet. I'm not sure how yet. Also, all the guitars that I'm building right now while we're in quarantine have a purpose beyond me building a guitar. And that purpose is creating awareness of certain organizations. Because this is a Bob Ross guitar, I am creating awareness of an, an organization that helps pet owners and animals during this uh, time of financial crisis. So if you uh, feel it in your heart to help those in need, please check out the links in the description of this video. There are a couple of different places where you can donate to help out your fellow human beings during this, uh, this global hard time that we find ourselves in. So I really hope you check that out. I hope you join me again next week. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.